The INTE gument, the largest and heaviest organ in the body, weighing approximately 15% of total body weight and having an average surface area of about 2 square meters, comprises the skin, hair, sebaceous gland snails, and sweat glands. It covers the entire surface of the body and becomes continuous with the mucous membranes of the digestive, respiratory, and urogenital systems at their external orifices. Skin lines the outer ear canal, covers the eardrums, and is continuous with the conjunctiva of the eye at the eyelid. Skin, skin is composed of two layers, the outer stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, known as the epidermis which overlies the connective tissue layer, called the dermis. The epidermis is separated from the dermis by a basement membrane. The junction is not a flat plane instead, the dermis forms cone-like and ridge-like elevation dermal ridges, dermal papillae. The dermal ridges are precisely matched by contours of the epidermis. The epidermal ridges, epidermal papillae, the epidermal ridges and dermal ridges together are known as the rate apparatus. Deep to the dermis is a facial layer, the hypodermis, superficial fascia, which may contain a considerable amount of adipose tissue in overweight individuals, but the hypodermis is not considered to be a component of skin. Skin has many functions one forming a supple cover for the body two protecting against impact and abrasion injury, bacterial assault, and dehydration. Three absorbing ultraviolet radiation for vitamin D production. Four receiving information from the external milieu, example touch, pain, temperature. Five regulating temperature. Six excreting sweat. Seven producing melanin, protecting the deeper la ERS from excessive UV radiation, the presence of raised ridges with intervening grooves in the forms of loops, whorls, and arches, fingerprints, on the pads of th fingertips and toes provides for a less slippery surface so that smaller objects may be held more securely and provides sensory input for the identification of the object being handled. Epidermis, the epidermis, the outer layer of skin, is ovuscular and receives its nutrients via diffusion from the capillary networks of the dermis. The epidermis is composed of a stratified squamous keratinized epithelium whose average thickness is less than 0.1 mm, although on the palm of the hand it may be almost 1 mm in thickness, and on the sole of the foot it may be 1.4 mm thick. There are two types of skin, one thick skin, present on the palm of the hand and the sole of the foot, is hairless, has no erector pili muscles, and has no sebaceous glands, although it does have sweat glands. Too thin skin, present on the remainder of the body, possesses hair follicles, erector pili muscles, sebaceous glands, and sweat glands. Four different cell types compose the epidermis keratinocytes, Langerhans cells, melanocytes, and Merkel cells of which keratinocytes are the most populous and are the ones that are derived from ectoderm. The other three cell types are distributed among the keratinocytes because the cells on the epithelial surface are dequamated. The lost cells are replaced by mitotic activity of keratinocytes occupying the deeper layers of the epidermis. It is believed that epidermal growth factor and interleukin high induce mitotic activity of keratinocytes, and transforming growth factor is believed to inhibit such activity. Cell division occurs only at night, and the newly formed cells push the cells above them toward the surface, eventually to be sloughed off. It takes approximately one month for a newly formed cell to reach the free surface and be desquamated. As keratinocytes move toward the free surface, they undergo cytomorphosis, which permits the epidermis to be divided into five layers. Only three of the five layers are evident in thin skin, whereas all five layers are observable in thick skin. Layers of the epidermis, the five layers of the epidermis of thick skin are stratum basale, stratum germinativum, sitting directly on the basement membrane, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum, fig 14.2 and table 14.2. Keratinocytes of the five layers adhere to adjacent cells via desmosomal contacts. 
Isolated cells of the strata granulosum and lucidum are present in thin skin, but their cells do not form distinct layers as they do in thick skin. Thin skin has only three of the five strata. The stratum basal, stratum germinativum, composed of a single layer of cuboidal to low columnar shaped cells, sits on the basement membrane. These cells undergo cell division, and the newly formed cells push the older cells lying above them toward the free surface. Stratum basal cells form hemidesmosomes with the underlying basal lamina and desmosomes with their adjacent cells. The desmosomal and hemidesmosomal plagues have bundles of intermediate filaments, tonofilaments, associated with them. Their cytoplasm has a limited organelle content but is rich in ribosomes. The stratum spinosum is a substantial region composed of several layers of cells that are polyhedral in shape in the vicinity of the stratum basal but become flatter as the cells migrate away from the basement membrane. The polyhedral cells display mitotic activity, but cells in the more superficial layers of the stratum spinosum no longer divide. The organelles of these cells resemble those of the stratum basal, however, their tonofilaments are better developed especially in the more superficially located flattened cells, forming thicker bundles known as tonofibrils. In the same region, the flattened cells house secretory granules called membrane-coating granules, lamellar granules, which are less than 0.5 him in diameter and contain lamellar deposits of lipid. Cytoplasmic extensions of these cells resemble spines hence the name of this layer. The spines of adjacent cells interdigitate with each other, and by forming desmosomes these cells adhere to each other and to cells of the strata basal and granulosum. Cells of the stratum granulosum house membrane-coating granules and non-membrane-bound deposits of keratohyalin in which bundles of tonofilaments are embedded. The contents of the membrane-coating granules are exocytosed into the extracellular space superficial to the stratum spinosum so that there is a pool of lipid barrier that accumulates between the stratum granulosum and the stratum lucidum that prevents aqueous fluid from penetrating in either direction. The presence of this lipid makes the epidermis impermeable to water, preventing fluid loss from the underlying dermis and the entry of water into the dermis from outside the body. The stratum lucidum is a transparent layer of cells whose organelles, including its nucleus, have been eliminated by lysosomal action. These are dead cells, but they are packed with a significant amount of tonofilaments enveloped by elodin, a derivative of keratohyalin. The cell membranes of these cells are coated on their cytoplasmic aspect by the protein involucrin, whose function is not understood. The stratum corneum, the most superficial layer, is usually the thickest layer of the epidermis of thick skin. The plasma membranes of these dead cells, known as squams, are thickened, and they are filled with keratin filaments. Cells of the most superficial layers of the stratum corneum cannot maintain desmosomal contact with their neighbors and are sloughed off. Psoriasis, psoriasis is a chronic, non-contagious autoimmune disease that affects the skin and joints. It is characterized by patchy lesions especially around the joints called psoriatic plagues, which are brought about by an increase in the number of proliferating cells of the stratum basal, resulting in an accumulation of cells of the stratum corneum. Plagues frequently occur on the skin of the elbows and knees but can affect any area, including the scalp and genitals, even the fingernails and toenails may be affected. Psoriasis can also cause inflammation of the joints, which is known as psoriatic arthritis. Of individuals with psoriasis, 10% to 15% have psoriatic arthritis. Epidermolysis bullosa, one of a group of hereditary diseases, is characterized by blistering of the skin after minor trauma. It is caused by defects in the intermediate filaments of the keratinocytes that prevent stability in these cells and defects in anchoring fibrils between the dermis and epidermis. Non keratinocytes in the epidermis. There are three types of non-keratinocytes in the epidermis, see Fig 14.2 Langerhans cells, antigen-presenting cells derived from the bone marrow, are scattered throughout the stratum spinosum, there may be 800 Langerhans cells per square millimeter. The nuclei and cytoplasm are not unusual except for the presence of cytoplasmic burbeck granules, vermiform granules, which resemble table tennis paddles in section and whose function is unknown. 
these cells appear clear with the light microscope and may be differentiated from surrounding keratinocytes by the absence of tonofilaments. Similar to other antigen-presenting cells, Langerhans cells possess FC and C3 receptors, phagocytose antigens, form epitope major histocompatibility complexes, and migrate to nearby lymph nodes, where they present their epitope major histocompatibility complexes to T cells. Merkel cells, derived from neural crest, are clear cells located in the stratum basale, especially in the oral mucosa, hair follicles, and tips of the hengers. The nuclei of these cells have deep grooves, their cytoskeleton is rich in cytokeratins, and they are closely linked with myelinated sensory fibers, forming Merkel cell neurite associations. Merkel cells function as mechanoreceptors responsible for light touch. Melanocytes also are neural crest derivatives and are located in the stratum basale, but they have long, slender, finger-like processes that extend into the stratum spinosum, where their tips are surrounded by cytoplasmic extensions of keratinocytes. Melanocytes possess oval-shaped granules, except in individuals with red hair these granules are spherical, containing the enzyme tyrosinase, known as melanosomes. In these melanosomes, the tyrosinase converts tyrosine into the dark pigment melanin. Melanosomes migrate into the tip of the melanocyte processes accumulating more and more melanin along the way, a process stimulated by UV radiation. The tips of these melanocyte processes are nipped off by keratinocytes, a process known as cytochrine secretion, and the melanosomes located within the keratinocytes of the stratum spinosum are attacked by lysosomal enzymes, to be degraded within a few days. Meanwhile, the melanin acts to protect the keratinocytes from UV irradiation. Although the population density of melanocytes varies with regions of the body of a single individual, the numbers are essentially the same across the races. The differences in skin color are due not to a greater number of melanocytes but to the greater production and slower degradation of melanin. In the presence of UV light, tyrosinase activity is increased, resulting in acceleration of melanin production. Also, melanin is darkened by the presence of UV light. Pigmentation is also influenced by adrenocorticotropic hormone of the pituitary gland. In certain instances, such as in patients with Addison's disease, the production of cortisol is insufficient, causing an excess of adrenocorticotropic hormone that results in hyperpigmentation. Vitiligo is a disease in which certain areas of the skin, often the face and hands, are devoid of pigmentation. This autoimmune disease destroys the melanocytes, resulting in an area devoid of pigmentation, although keratinocytes are unaffected. Vitiligo is usually associated with other autoimmune disorders. Albinism, albinism is a genetic defect resulting in the complete lack of melanin production. Individuals with albinism possess melanosomes but fail to produce tyrosinase, and so they are devoid of melanin. Moles, nevi, are benign accumulations of melanocytes in the epidermis. They vary in size from small dots to more than one inch in diameter. They may be flat or raised, may be smooth or rough, wart-like, and may have hairs growing from them. Although they are usually brown or dark brown, some moles are flesh-colored. UV rays are of two types. UVB rays are responsible for sunburn, whereas UV rays tan the skin. It has been shown that UV radiation may be an important factor in photoaging and in the development of basal cell carcinoma and melanoma later in life. Dermis, the connective tissue layer deep to the epidermis, known as the dermis, is composed of two regions, the superficial papillary layer and the deeper reticular layer. Both layers are composed of a dense, irregular fibroelastic connective tissue. The papillary layer is loose, with slender bundles of type I collagen, whereas the reticular layer is much denser, housing thick, coarse bundles of type I collagen. Deep to the dermis, but not a part of skin, is the hypodermis, a superficial fascia of gross anatomy, which frequently houses a variable layer of adipose tissue, the panniculus adiposus, which can be several centimeters thick in obese individuals. The dermis is thin in certain regions, as in the eyelids, where it is about 0.6 millimeters thick. 
In other regions, such as the sole of the foot, it may be 3 mm thick. The papillary layer abuts the basement membrane, forming evaginations known as dermal ridges, dermal papillae, that interdigitate with epidermal ridges. The fibers of this loose connective tissue are composed of type 3 collagen and slender elastic fibers that intertwine with one another. Additionally, anchoring fibrils, composed of type 7 collagen fibers, attach to the reticular fibers to assist in securing the basement membrane to the papillary layer and, in this fashion, affixing the epidermis to the dermis. The cells of the papillary layer are the normal cells of connective tissue proper, but this region also houses capillary loops to provide nutrients for the ovascular epidermis and aid in regulating body temperature. Additionally, encapsulated neural nerve endings, such as Meissner's corpus cles for mechanoreception and Krauss's end bulbs, which may be thermoreceptors, are located in the papillary layer. Naked nerve endings penetrate the papillary layer to enter the epidermis, where they serve as pain receptors. The reticular layer is a much denser connective tissue than the papillary layer, and its fibers are composed mostly of coarse bundles of type I collagen interspersed with thick elastic fibers embedded in a matrix of ground substance rich in dermata and sulfate. The cellular composition is similar to that of the papillary layer but not quite as rich. The deep aspects of sweat glands, sebaceous glands, and hair follicles, with their associated erector pili muscles, are located in the dermis. A rich plexus of blood and lymph vessels, which give rise to smaller vessels that supply the papillary layer, also is located in the dermis. Encapsulated neural elements such as Pacinian corpus cles and Ruffini's corpus cles respond to deep pressure and tensile forces. The three types of malignant tumors of the skin are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Basal cell carcinoma, the most common malignancy in humans, affects approximately 1 million Americans each year. Almost all basal cell carcinomas occur on parts of the body excessively exposed to the sun, especially the face, ears, neck, scalp, shoulders, and back. Individuals at highest risk have fair skin and light-colored hair. It most often affects older individuals, but younger individuals have become more affected in recent years. Individuals who work or spend their leisure time in the sun are particularly susceptible. Basal cell carcinoma arises in the cells of the stratum basale. A lesion forms at the affected site, which may appear as psoriasis or eczema or as a small sore, example on the face, that bleeds and does not heal. Only a trained physician can diagnose basal cell carcinoma, and it must be confirmed by biopsy. Surgical removal is the usual treatment. Although basal cell carcinomas normally do not metastasize, individuals who have experienced one episode are at risk for recurrence. Squamous cell carcinoma Squamous cell carcinoma is the second most common skin cancer. More than 250,000 new cases are diagnosed each year in the United States. Middle-aged and older individuals with fair complexions who have been exposed to the sun for a prolonged period are most likely to be affected. The keratinocytes of the skin are affected, and the lesions appear as crusted or scaly patches on the skin with a red, inflamed base or a non-healing ulcer. They are generally found in sun-exposed areas, but they may occur on the lips, inside the mouth, on the genitalia, or anywhere on the body. Any lesion, especially lesions that enlarge, bleed, change in appearance, or do not heal, should be evaluated by a dermatologist. Early diagnosis and treatment are important because lesions can increase in size and metastasize. Surgical intervention is the usual treatment. Malignant melanoma Malignant melanoma is a very serious malignant tumor of melanocytes. These transformed cells multiply, invade the dermis, enter the lymphatic and circulatory systems, and metastasize to many organs. Melanoma affects fair skinned individuals more frequently especially when these individuals are exposed to excessive UV rays. Evidence suggests that UV radiation used in indoor tanning equipment may cause melanoma. The risk may also be inherited. Malignant melanoma is curable when detected early, but can be fatal if allowed to progress and spread. The usual treatment after early detection is surgical excision. 
glands of the skin, although skin has four different types of glands, Fig 14.3, only three of them are described in this chapter, eccrine sweat glands, apocrine sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. The fourth type of skin gland, the mammary gland, which is a highly modified sweat gland, is described with the female reproductive system in chapter 20. Almost 4 million eccrine sweat glands are distributed throughout most of the skin covering the body. Each of these simple coiled tubular glands is an ectodermal derivative, invested by a basement membrane, that grows down through the epidermis and dermis and frequently enters the hypodermis. There it forms the highly coiled, merocrine secretory portion of the gland. Arising from the secretory portion is the narrower, corkscrew-shaped duct that pierces the tip or crest of a dermal ridge and enters the epidermis to end at its free surface as a sweat pore. The simple cuboidal to low columnar epithelium of the secretory portion is composed of dark cells and clear cells. Myoepithelial cells, rich in actin and myosin filaments, surround the cells of the secretory portion, assisting in the expression of sweat from its lumen. Dark cells, mucoid cells, viewed with the electron microscope are seen to be pyramidal in shape, where the base is at the lumen and the apex of the cell may or may not reach the basal lamina. These cells manufacture and release a mucus type of secretion. Clear cells are similar in shape to dark cells, with their bases abutting the basal lamina and their apex barely reaching the lumen. These cells exhibit a rich glycogen content and an intricately folded basal plasma lemma on electron micrographs, indicative of participating in epithelial transport. These cells manufacture and release into the lumen a serous secretory product. The stratified cuboidal epithelium of the eccrine sweat gland duct is composed of a basal layer housing numerous mitochondria and a luminal layer with a scant amount of cytoplasm and an irregularly shaped nucleus. Sweat produced by the secretory portion is more or less isoosmotic with plasma, but the cells of the duct portion conserve sodium, chloride, and potassium, and excrete lactic acid, urea, and some ingested material, such as certain drugs and the essence of garlic. Apocrine sweat, apocrine sweat glands are similar to, but are much larger than, eccrine sweat glands and are located in the armpit, axilla, areola of the nipple, and circumanal area. Despite their name, they most probably secrete via the merocrine mode. They begin secretion only after puberty, are associated with and deliver their secretory product into the canals of hair follicles, and, in some women, undergo periodic alteration associated with the menstrual cycle. Although their secretion is odorless, bacterial metabolism converts it into an odoriferous substance, 3-methyl-1,2-hexanic acid, which may have pheromonal properties. There are certain modified apocrine sweat glands in the external ear canal, wax-producing ceruminous glands, and the glands of moll in the eyelids. Sebaceous glands are holocrine glands that are associated with hair follicles. The ducts of these glands empty their secretory product, the oily sebum, into the canals of hair follicles, they are located only in glabrous, hairy, skin. The most peripheral cells of these globular glands are flat, they sit on a basement membrane and undergo cell division to produce more flat cells and larger, round cells. The larger cells are centrally located, and they accumulate lipid droplets that eventually displace the organelles of the cells, causing their degeneration, necrosis, and transformation into sebum that coats the hair shaft and skin surface. Sebum makes the hair less brittle and the skin more supple. Sebaceous glands, similar to apocrine sweat glands, are under hormonal control and become more active after puberty. Hair, the surface of thin skin is covered with hair, Fig 14.4, a keratinous filament whose amino acid composition determines whether it is soft and supple or coarse and wiry. Humans have three types of hair, linigo, present only on fetuses and newborns, vellus, a soft, short, very fine hair, such as that present on the eyelids, and terminal hairs, the coarse, hard, dark hair that is located on the scalp and eyebrows and face in men. Humans appear to be much less hairy than other primates, however, that is because most human hair is vellus, whereas most primate hair is terminal hair. 
The number of hairs per square centimeter is the same in humans as in other primates. Hair develops from hair follicles, epidermal and bag in at ions that frequently extend into the hypodermis. They are enveloped in a basement membrane, known as the glassy membrane, which is surrounded by dermally derived connective tissue membrane. There are several components of a hair follicle, the hair root is an enlarged, hollow terminus whose concavity is occupied by vascular connective tissue elements known as the dermal papilla, the two together are known as the hair bulb. The core of the hair root consists of cells known as the matrix, the mitotic activity of these cells is responsible for hair growth. Immediately deep to the glassy membrane is a single layer of cells at the hair bulb that increase in number in the vicinity of the stratum corneum, this layer of cells is known as the external root sheath. The internal root sheath, surrounded by the external root sheath, is composed of three layers of cells, Henley's layer, Huxley's law ER, and the deepest layer, the cuticle of the internal root sheath. The internal root sheath develops from the most peripheral cells of the matrix, it extends from the matrix to where the duct of the sebaceous gland enters the hair canal. The absence of the internal root sheath from that point leaves a space known as the canal of the hair follicle. The hair shaft, the part of the hair follicle that extends through the epidermis, has three layers, most peripheral is the cuticle of the hair, which arises from peripheral cells of the matrix. Slightly peripheral, the cortex arises from the cells of the matrix peripheral to the center. During their migration away from their site of origin, the cells of the cortex manufacture and accumulate keratin filaments that become embedded in a matrix of trichohyalin, a substance similar to keratohyalin of the stratum granulosum, and form the hard keratin characteristic of the hair shaft. The central core of the hair shaft, the medulla, arises from the most central cells of the matrix. The medulla is displaced by the cells of the cortex as the hair shaft extends above the skin surface. Hair color, hair color is due to the production of melanin by melanocytes that occupy a position in the matrix along the basal lamina adjacent to the dermal papilla. The tips of the dendritic processes of the melanocytes become engulfed and are pinched off by cells of the cortex, depending on the quantity of melanin that the cells of the cortex carry with them, hair color ranges from light blonde to dark black. As mentioned earlier, individuals with red hair have spherical rather than oval melanosomes. Gray hair of older individuals is due to the reduced activity of tyrosinase that prevents melanocytes from producing an adequate quantity of melanin pigment. Erector pili Erector pili are smooth muscle bundles that insert into the papillary layer of the dermis and, at an oblique angle, into the connective tissue sheet surrounding the external root sheet of the hair follicle. When these smooth muscle cells contract, they raise the hair shaft and depress the skin at the site of muscle attachment. The non-depressed regions of the epidermis seem to be elevated, giving the appearance of goose fumes. Hair growth, the growth of hair, about 2 to 3 mm per week, occurs in three phases, the antigen phase, when the growth period may be 6 years for hair on the scalp but only a few months for hair in the underarm, the catagen phase, when the hair bulb involutes for a short time, and the telogen phase, when the hair follicle is at rest until the hair shaft falls out and a new hair shaft is formed in its place. Hair follicles in specific regions of the body alter from vellum hair to terminal hair in response to the presence of hormones. At puberty, pubic hairs and underarm hairs develop in boys and girls, and facial hair becomes coarse in boys. Acne, a disease of the skin, is the most common disease seen by dermatologists. Acne is the term for plugged pores, blackheads and whiteheads, pimples and deeper lumps, cysts or nodules, that occur on the face, neck, chest, back, shoulders, and upper arms. It affects nearly 100% of teenagers to some extent. Acne is not restricted to any age group, however, adults in their 40s can get acne. When severe, acne can lead to serious and permanent scarring. Several factors contribute to the development of acne. Acne is a result of obstructions causing an impacting of sebum within the hair follicle. The bacteria Propionibacterium acnes produce substances that cause redness and inflammation, and they produce enzymes, 
which dissolve the sebum into irritating substances that exacerbate the inflammation. Androgens, male hormones that are present in both sexes, enlarge the sebaceous glands and increase sebum production, during puberty, which may lead to plug formation progressing to acne. Estrogens, female hormones, improve acne in girls. The monthly menstrual cycle is due to changes in the estrogen levels, which is why acne in a girl may get better and then get worse as she goes through her monthly cycle. It is also believed that there is a genetic factor in acne, but the factor has not been identified. Nail plates, nails, nail plates, fig 14.5, composed of thick plates of horny keratin, are located on the distal phalanx of each of the 20 digits. Each nail plate lies on the epidermal nail bed and grows from the nail matrix that is located in that part of the nail root that is directly deep to the proximal nail fold, a doubling over of the epidermis. The stratum corneum of the nail fold, known as the eponychium, cuticle, overlies the lunula, the white region of the nail plate. On the lateral aspects of the nail plate, the epidermis folds down to form the lateral nail walls, where each nail wall borders a longitudinal depression, the nail groove. Under the free end of the nail plate, the epidermis folds down, and its stratum corneum forms the cuticle-like hyponychium. Fingernails grow very slowly, about 2 mm per month, and toenails grow even more slowly.